the last few years, we've done several trips for Cordes Travel, Leon Links and myself, to explore different areas for, to see whether they were interesting for fly fishing, for pike or for other species. And this year we're in the middle of Sweden to try a few lakes to see whether they are interesting to fly fish for pike. We started the first day by using our float tubes or belly boats on a very shallow lake and Benny guided us through that first day. Today we're going to uh, fly fishing uh, with a belly boat. We are in the middle of Sweden in a really shallow lake. It has a lot of reams and roaches. But uh, the main thing the pike eats here is actually breeze. I want to ask you a typically Dutch question. What yes. Does, what does it cost to fish here? Oh, that, okay. are, there, are there any licenses? Ah, yeah, the here? fishing license is 100 Swedish crowns a year. It's about uh, 10 euros. So it's very cheap. That's very cheap. Yeah, very cheap. Let's do this. Okay. Yeah, great. We are right at the spot. We have paddling for like uh, 10 minutes. And uh, this is the area where I think we're going to have to fish with big flies uh, because of the bream is probably in the, in the weeds. So, game on. I'm gonna start here with some bigger versions of the flies I use a lot in Holland. The original one was white, yellow and black. That's the colors of a Dutch soccer club, football club called Vitesse. That's why it's called that like that. I use them in many different color combinations. So let's see what works here. Change to a white, yellow and black streamer. The Vitesse in it, scored again. Not a big pike, but nice start. Yeah. First pike of the day, fishing an intermediate line so I can fish the stream a little bit deeper. Looks like the, because of the bright sunshine, the pike are a bit deeper, they don't like the sun too much. Barbless hook, so easy to let it go. Easy to unhook. So we're fishing really shallow, uh, really close to the weeds. It uh, can't be more than a meter here. And apparently the fish is standing here and uh, we're going to hammer on. So we changed to a, uh, what did you say? A yellow, white? White, yellow and black. Okay. It's called the Borussia in Germany. Okay. <laughs> but usually it scores, be it scores better than the soccer club. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wildlife is really special here. Nature is really quiet. You can see a lot of wildlife. Where, like we saw a moose, a female moose with a small calf along the waterside this week. But there's also beaver, there's wolf. There's a lot of special animals here. It's really a destination also for wildlife photographers. They can really take all the pictures they want here. Fishing to this point, and now I've, uh, I've got a hooked into a what looks like a bigger pike. Let's hope it's well hooked. It's a strong fish. Looks like a slightly better, better fish. Because you're so low to the water, it's easy to land a pike like this. You just put your hand underneath the gill cover. Move all the way to the point of the of the nose. He tries to get through my legs here. And then when you lift it like that, it usually opens up its mouth and you can easily unhook it. They are strong, aren't they? 
Yeah, yeah. We're fighting well. A lot of oxygen in the water here. Yeah. Just like that. Put your hand underneath the gill cover all the way to the point. And if you hold it like that, the mouth will go open. It's about 80 centimeters, I would say. Took the fly really deep. Really strong take close to the weeds. A lot of fun. It's time to get it back in the water. And hope it sends its grandmother. There she goes. Yeah. Go and get grandma. <laughs> Perfect. During this week, we're staying at the Yosebo Wildlife Camp, a camp with a long history. The main building is from 1700. It has been placed in this camp around 1963. It used to be a park with a lot of wildlife. It has been closed for about 20 years, but now they're rebuilding it. They're putting, putting new apartments, new huts there where people can stay. And it looks like it's going to be a very good destination, especially for sport fishermen in this area. With the wind from the right, a lot of right-handed fly casters have problems because they try to cast like this, but the fly will still hit the rod, might even damage it. If you cast like this on your right side, which you are, you are used to, but you keep your rod tip over your left shoulder, now the wind pushes the fly away from the rod. It will never hit it. And you can cast without any problems. First evening we had a very nice surprise. The owner of Yosebo took us to a part of the lake where we, there was a pontoon boat lying ready for us with even a bar barbecue on top of it. So we made a nice tour on the lake and had a nice barbecue at the same time. So it was really special, a really nice surprise for the two of us. We've made this trip for fishing in the middle of Sweden, or short for fins. This area has a lot of nature, a lot of beautiful lakes. It's very easy to reach it by flying into Stockholm and take a rental car from there. From Stockholm it's only two, three hours drive and then you're in the middle of some very nice fishing water. There's a lot of shallow, almost virgin waters here which are perfect for fly fishing, but for other types of fishing as well. This is a really a place where you have a good chance to be on yourself. Book a guide for a day so you can really learn how to know the water. If you are interested in FIMS fishing in the middle of Sweden, go to their website www.fims.nu and you find all the information you need for fishing in the middle of Sweden. The second day we were guided by Anders Persson. He had a very nice boat on the water and he brought us to all the different areas that were looked very interesting for pike, especially bigger pike. He seemed to know the water really well. He's also a fly fisherman himself, so he really knows what to look for as a fly fisher. My name is Anders and I have got a cooperation with Josebo. And now Rudy is in a belly boat just behind me and we got Leon in the front of the boat. And I offer both belly boat and boat fishing. Before they fished on more shallow places, now they're gonna fish on some deeper spots and see if catch any big ones. Today I'm fishing from out of a boat because um, we've seen here the weed and the water goes down here very quickly. So we hope that there's, there's will be pike, big pikes. Fishing from out of belly boat is also a lot of fun because you're one with the nature. And the advantage of a boat is you can be faster, go faster to another place. And it's also fun to see the pike attack your fly because you're standing up high in the, in the boat and from our belly boat you sit low. Pike hit my fly 
hopefully it's a good bike. Watch it. It's going out. It didn't took long because we are now for five minutes in the boat. Take care. Watch it. Fight well. I think I will release it in the water, not take it out. I will release the pike in the water because we are fishing with no barbels on the, on the hook. So I don't want to take it out. It's a nice fish, nice colors. And there it goes. I'm using today, I'm using a golden bream. In the water it has the colors of a bream. As you see, it's a very big fly because I want to catch a big pike. We're in the middle of Sweden and yesterday we saw some moose. And to the left of me, we have the home of the beavers. So we can see a lot of animals up here. And actually last week I saw one bear. And it's the same place. I heard that it was maybe two or three days ago. They saw some wolves on, in the forest. So we got a big nature here. Rudy is catching a fish and we're going to look if it's a one nice one. It's looked like a strong and a good fish. Rudy have been fishing here for a while now and it's got this pavement now I think. It's a nice fish. Oh it's a nice pike. Very nice pike. Yeah. Hey! Oh, it's on the same fly. Yeah, of course, the same fly. It's a nice fish. There it goes, into the deep. Look out for the boat. Yeah. Fight's good. It's a nice fat bike with nice colors. And I have to get it back now. Anders also supplied us with a very nice dinner on the water side. We went ashore on a little island. He prepared a very nice dinner for us on a, on a fire. It's all good and getting even better. A blue sky, it's only sunny weather. It's a perfect day, ain't nothing wrong cause everything's all right. special thing about fishing in this area is that you can fish almost 24 hours a day, 24-7 I could say. It does get a bit darker in the evening, but even at 11 o'clock it's still that, there's still that much light you could, that you could read a newspaper outside. So it really stays light, it doesn't get, really get dark during the summer. So you can make the most of your, out of your fishing holiday. In the middle of Sweden, Economic Club takes really good care of this area. The club is made up of mostly guides and accommodation owners. If you like to combine nature, fishing and living, then this is the place for you.